Well, good morning and welcome everyone. It looks like we still have a few people showing up. I just wanted to give everybody just a couple minutes to join us. Um, so before we get started, I'll just do a, a brief introduction. Um, there are some of you that may already be familiar with me. My name is Monica Quinnett. I am the Outreach and Communications Coordinator for WUSADA. I've been with WUSADA for going on four years now, and I am the first point of contact for new companies uh, coming in to learn about the programs and how to take advantage of uh, what we have to offer. Um, so today, what we're going to do is just provide that broad overview of who WUSADA is, take a little bit of a, a deeper look into our programs, our Global Connect and our Fund Match program. But before we get into that section, um, we have Teresa Yoshioka with the Oregon Department of Agriculture here to go ahead and speak a little bit about what is available to you at the state level. So Teresa, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you for now so we can get the ball rolling. Right, well, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, do you mind? Oh, there, there's my slide set. So I have just a few slides, but welcome everybody. It's great to be here. I work with the Oregon Department of Agriculture, uh, international trade manager. I've been with the state for about eight years now and entirely working with companies throughout that period on export, really helping companies make those connections and working with important partners like Wasada. So today I just wanted to give a quick overview of what we do and a lot of it kind of blends into the great services and programs that Wasada has. You wanna, there we go. And I imagine many of you are here because you're interested in finding more customers and there's a lot more customers outside of the US than there are within the US. So that's one of the big things we, we wanna remember is 95% of your consumers are outside of the US and that's growing every year. Um, Oregon produces a lot of great products and we have to find customers outside of Oregon because our population is relatively small. So 80% of what we're producing leaves Oregon and half of that is going overseas. And as I mentioned, we work a lot with Wasada. When you're looking at exporting, and I think some of you are at different phases. So one of the first things when you're looking at an international market, it's the same as when you're looking at the US. You really need to understand the market. Can you, what sector you're gonna sell into? Are you selling into restaurants? Um, not all ag products are going into human consumption. Sometimes you're selling into animal feed. Is that going into the dairies? understanding how many, how much production of dairy farms they have in their state or country and looking at where, really where the opportunities are. So market research is important. We partner with Wasada for market um, stats. We can look at where there are some trends. We can also look at export stats to see what is going where. And with agriculture products, there's a lot of market access questions that come up. And so we can help you with those questions, can your ingredients for your specific product go into different markets? So we can help a lot with that because we work with Wasada and travel into these countries. We do get a little bit more experience in working in different cultural situations and business culture. So we can either help with some recommendations in that space and we can connect you with some great resources in those spaces. Uh, that's mostly what we do in that space. And then once you're understanding where you're wanting to go, then it's about making some of those connections. And that's really where Wasada's Global Connect program comes in. And each of us from the States works with Wasada to do outbound trade missions, inbound trade missions, trade shows, and virtual meetings. All those are ways for you to meet potential customers in those international markets. On my agency side, we're also the regulatory. So we have all the licenses 
licensing for food processing within the state. So if you have a product that is licensed by Oregon, whether it's pet food, um, certified seed, or uh, actually, or a raw product, all of those are going to need to go with a certificate, um, certificate of origin, free sale, phytosanitary if it's a non-processed, we can help with that. So please reach out to our team and we can connect you with where you would order those certificates. So that's really the main areas we can help you connect. And a lot of what we're doing is working with Wasada. You can reach out to me at contact information there. It's a long email address. So if you need to get it again, you can always just email Monica and she can send that over. But anyway, look forward to talking to you more. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, and I'll let Monica take it from here. Excellent. Thank you so much, Teresa. That was wonderful. And just for a little housekeeping, um, if you want to go ahead and enter any questions that you may have into the Q&A box that you have available um, on your screen. And what we'll do is go ahead and address those at the end of the presentation. Hopefully, we'll be able to answer your questions as we move um, through the presentation. Uh, but again, um, please go ahead and if you do come up with anything, enter it into that Q&A. And so Teresa gave a, a good um, overview of what's available through the state. And just to build on that about WUSADA and who we are. So we are an independent nonprofit trade association. Uh, we work very closely with the 13 Western State Departments of Agriculture and American Samoa, and as well as the USDA to help agribusinesses with their exporting of their goods. Um, we have been dedicated to soling for dedicating to exporting for uh, oh, just about 40 years. We're celebrating that 40th anniversary this year. And just to give you an idea of where our funding comes from. So it's actually through the USDA's market access program. And this program is designed to support those overseas and marketing and promotional activities by the US company. And WUSADA is one of about 70 other market access program cooperators. Some of the others would include the Organic Trade Association, the Cranberry Marketing Committee, the Wine Institute in California, the Washington Apple Commission. Um, WUSADA specifically uses these, the market access funds to support companies throughout the West through all stages of exporting. And then we have a global network of partners and resources that we can take advantage of as well, such as our in-country trade representatives, the agricultural trade offices around the world, and then of course the agricultural marketing divisions of our member states. Above all, we are trying to advocate for you with education, support, introductions, and then financial assistance. So um, our members, uh, Teresa kind of touched on this, are the 13 Western State Departments of Agriculture and American Samoa. So we refer to them as our members and then the companies in our programs we refer to as our participants. So while WUSADA is not a government agency, we're very closely linked to the state and, state and federal departments of agriculture. And like Teresa mentioned um, earlier in her portion, um, each state has that agricultural marketing division that works in partnership with WUSADA to provide a mixture of activities and services best suited for its agricultural community. So make sure to take advantage of what's available to you at the state level. And I will be following up um, with a, an email with our contact information so that way you have both Teresa's and my contact information moving forward. Taking a look at the companies in our program. So we have hundreds of companies that come in and take advantage of WUSADA annually and with a very diverse range of products from seafood to supplements. Um, the top industries that would be represented um, would be our consumer ready products. About 86% of our companies fall under that category. Ingredients at about 10% and then feed, forage and other at about 4%. Um, one of the questions that we get from companies brand new to the program is, is my company too small to fit in with WUSADA, WUSADA programs. Um, just know that over 90% of our participants have 10 or fewer employees, oftentimes just one in two employees. So we really have designed the programs to work for the smaller business. Um, here's a look at the markets that our companies reach. The top five markets reached by WUSADA would be China, Europe, Japan, Southeast Asia, and Korea. However, you can see those pinpoints across the map. So we do have a, a far reach. 
Here is a look at our program results from the 2019 program year. So we had 41 WUSADA facilitated trade activities, 500 participating US exporters, nearly 17,000 buyer to seller introductions, and then $585 million in sales from our participating companies, which is pretty amazing. And how we gather all this information is through our survey collection. So when you start participating in the program, when you participate in our activity-based program, Global Connect will have you complete a survey after you have participated in that activity. And then if you um, are using our cost reimbursement program, at the end of the program year, we'll ask that you complete a survey to document the program results. And all of this information is very key in helping us secure future funding for the program. We share it in aggregate format, as you see on the slide here, with the USDA FAS to help um, keep it, the programs viable at that federal level. So just know that we're not going to be giving out your proprietary information. So in creating your MyWusada account, now you have access to the Global Connect program. Um, so that's that activity-based program. Uh, you also can apply for the Fund Match program and take advantage of our export education. It is really, um, it's vital that you use everything that is available to you through WUSADA. We find that companies that take full advantage um, just uh, seem to have a better impact uh, when they are going out into that export world. If you do ever have questions about navigating your MyWusada account, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, we're trying to make it more relevant, putting new information up there. Uh, we're adding um, archive webinars that we've had. There's market research. Um, so let me know if you have any challenges in navigating. I will say at this point, uh, one of the biggest uh, hurdles that our companies have is uh, when they're trying to update information and not accessing using a Google Chrome browser. So that is the key to know moving forward. If you do ever run into any kind of technical issues, it's probably because you're not using that Google Chrome browser. But again, please reach out to me if you do have any issues with your MyWusada account. So WUSADA works on what we call our three-pillared approach. And that first pillar is the learn pillar, our export education that helps companies learn about the benefit of exporting and how to gain access to valuable market research through consumer insights, uh, through webinars and seminars. We also have access to uh, a database called Euromonitor International. And Euromonitor is an independent company um, based out of London, I believe. Um, and they have people on the ground all around the world collecting all of this great information, compiling it into this amazing database. And what I can do is based on your company um, HS code. So when you create your account, you put in your um, promoted products and that product focus, the HS codes, I can go in and pull a report that will show where current US companies are exporting similar products to. So if that's something that you're interested in, in gaining, please just send me a quick email and I'd be more than happy to go ahead and provide you with that report. Uh, we also have a, a growing research library that houses practical tips, fun short videos um, available on our website. There's even a know before you go checklist that'll help you navigate international trade shows and activities. Um, again, the one-on-one -on -one consultations, uh, that is for, if, you know, you just want a refresher on the program. Um, it's been a while since you've taken advantage of um, what's available to you and you just need that, that touch up, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to, to review the program with you. And it's also great for those uh, new employees that are onboarding and are going to be taking over some of the responsibilities in your participation with WUSADA. So that's a free service that we offer um, accessible to, to anyone who needs to know more about the programs and how they work. Now with our second pillar, that's the Connect pillar, our Global Connect program, which is providing those opportunities to explore those export markets and expand your global distribution through trade shows, trade missions, and more. And Teresa touched on this a little bit as well, but the Global Connect program provides you know, a range of trade activities, typically at low cost or discounted rates. They're designed to connect the US supplier with the foreign buyers coordinated with our project managers from our member states. And they're designed for multiple companies to participate in at once. So with the program, the top activities um, that we would typically have would be a presence at international trade shows and inbound and outbound trade missions. And then all you need to do is register and participate. We do all the legwork 
work in researching and planning the trade, trade activities with our project managers from our member states and they target markets all around the world. And then you have that added benefit of working directly with the project manager from our member states. So that's um, a really great point as well. Um, and as you're headquartered in the Wusada region, um, you're uh, more than welcome to participate in any of the activities that we have to offer, even if it's outside of your home state. Here is a look at some of the international trade shows that we would typically have a presence at. Um, so they're typically either annual or every other year. And what we'll do with the Global Connect program is purchase anywhere between 10 and 40 trade show booths and have a WUSADA pavilion within the larger USA pavilion. And companies who purchase that booth space through WUSADA instead of the trade show organizer typically get a better registration rate and then more perks such as free interpreters on the show floor and coordinated one-on-one -on -one meetings with foreign buyers. Just know that we're never going to charge more than what you would be um, charged going through the trade show organizer. And like I mentioned, it could uh, sometimes be a discounted rate as well. But these activities do sell out quickly. So if it's an area of interest for your company moving forward, don't delay in signing up and just pay attention to those registration dates so you can secure your booth space. Now, in a normal world, uh, we would have be, we would be offering our outbound and inbound trade missions. Um, so I'll share what it would typically look like, and then I'm going to invite Teresa back on to discuss what we're currently doing. So with our trade missions, we offer both inbound and outbound trade missions. And these are coordinated meetings um, to get our U.S. suppliers uh, in front of those pre-vetted uh, foreign buyers. So with the outbound missions, we're bringing our U.S. suppliers to that foreign country market to meet with those uh, buyers, distributors, wholesalers. Oftentimes, um, you'll have an opportunity to meet with government officials and the representatives from the Agricultural Trade Office. And then you have that opportunity to learn about the foreign region where we can take you on a retail market food service tour, receptions with government officials. Registration fees for these missions range between $250 to $500 to participate. And then you are responsible for your travel expenses. However, this could be an opportunity where you could apply for a fund match and seek reimbursements for your travel, which is helpful. Uh, with our inbound trade missions, it's the reverse where we're bringing those um, buyers to the United States, typically within the Western 13 states. Again, having that opportunity to sit down one-on-one -on -one with the foreign buyers. You can see a, an image up on, on the right. It's So it's kind of a speed dating venue set up. So you'll have your your own table and with your product set out and you'll get to sit down with each buyer that we bring in and it ranges between six and eight buyers per country market. And you get about 20 to 25 minutes per buyer um, to have that uh, communication with them and hopefully make a sale. Uh, these missions are extremely um, beneficial for our companies because number one, you don't have to travel very far to get to the activity and registration can range between 15 and $25. Sometimes they're even complimentary and uh, just depends on the mission. Um, so very cost effective uh, when you're comparing it to some of those international trade shows that can be tens of thousands of dollars. Now uh, we are trying to think out the side of the box uh, given um, the situation of COVID. So I'm gonna go ahead and let Teresa share some of the virtual things that we've been offering. Thank you. Yes, we, we've made the most of the opportunities. Everybody still needs to make connections. Buyers overseas are still looking for new products, especially now, as, as you know, not Asia kind of got hit earlier. So a lot of them can gather. Taiwan's been COVID free for a while. So we are, putting together activities overseas where we bring the buyers together and then we set up virtual meetings from here. And some people have found them even more efficient. Well, they are more efficient, but also very effective. So instead of traveling overseas, spending a few thousand on airline tickets and, and meals, you can actually stay at home. These are, if you're talking to Asia, you're gonna be in the evening so there's a time difference, but you can have a 25 minute meeting right in your office or your home. And that's been very, very efficient for all of our companies to make those connections. We're setting those up all the time. Right now we're having those virtual meetings with Japan and we will have some more next two weeks from now in Korea. We just are looking at this as an opportunity to expand, be creative and help people connect when we can't travel. And beyond just virtual meetings, we're looking at other promotions and activities. So we did a, a recipe promotion in Japan earlier this year, where we sent ingredients to a chef at a cooking school. 
and they put together two different bento boxes in Japan and they were beautiful. And then we created videos of how to make them with all the US ingredients and sent it out to 250 food service influencers and buyers. We normally couldn't have 250 people get exposed to your product in one-on-one -on -one meetings. That would take a long time. So we're really excited to use the digital and virtual to connect to make more impressions, I guess, and, and potentially make some more connections that way. We're also, Monday, we just kicked off a restaurant promotion. So companies that already have product in Korea qualified to sign up through Wasada for a restaurant promotion at the original Pancake House, Korea. So they are running a special menu that will run for one month and it start on Monday, featuring products from the Western US in as ingredients and banners and posters and some media efforts to really shine a light on the products that are already in the market in that case to reach more customers. So we help on both sides, um, introducing and expanding your sales in the market through some of these virtual activities. And we're open to hearing more ideas if you guys have any, of course. Excellent. Thank you so much, Teresa. I appreciate your time on that explanation. Um, one thing to note is we you can actually see the Bento Box video on our Wusada YouTube page. So feel free to go ahead and check that out. They really did an amazing job. Um, so you may not be able to understand unless you, you are familiar with Japanese, but uh, it definitely is worth taking a look at. So hopefully um, we'll be able to get back to those in-person missions because there's nothing um, quite the same as getting face-to-face -face, uh, with those individuals. Uh, but I think that the virtual is here to stay. Uh, like Teresa mentioned, um, companies just really see the value um, without having the high expense. So uh, I think we're going to have them moving forward um, intertwined with the traditional face-to-face -face meetings as well. All of the activities that we have available um, for registration are on our events search page or our events calendar. So take a look at those and see if any of the missions make sense to you. One thing to note, if there is a, a mission that is coming soon, make sure you go ahead and favorite it by clicking the star uh, next to the name of the activity. So that way you can get notified when the registration is going to be going live. Also, um, something to note, if a particular activity has sold out, make sure that you go ahead and wait list for it, because uh, oftentimes if someone is not able to attend, we will reach out to you and let you know that a space has become available. Um, one thing to note that, you know, if you did have some questions about whether or not your product would be a good fit for the specific mission that will be taking place, is when you click on the event name and you're logged into your MyWusada account, it'll open up the event page Page, and you'll have the contact information for the project manager of that mission. And they're typically the best ones to connect with to decide whether or not your product is going to be a good fit for that particular mission. Teresa, you had a question. Yes, go ahead. I wanted to emphasize and echo what you said about if, if it's sold out, get yourself on the wait list. Sometimes a project manager can work to uh, expand the project, get more budget, lobby to get more budget to expand. So please do that. We use the wait list uh, and try to include as many people as possible. Uh, the other thing is, is if you see a notice of something that's available, don't wait. Sign up right then because you see there's one sold out there. We sell out a lot of outbound trade missions immediately within days. So when we can travel again, I expect it to be competitive. Thank you so much. That, that's really uh, important information. So uh, it doesn't hurt to wait list. It doesn't hurt to favorite it. So that way you can get that information. And it doesn't mean that you have to attend if you change your mind, but make sure that you provide yourself the opportunity. Um, one of the other really great resources that you have available to you in having your MyWusada account are trade leads. And this is a free service that we offer. Um, it's a time sensitive request coming in from a foreign buyer seeking to source a specific product from a US supplier. So when we receive that request, it comes in typically through um, either one of our member states, uh, through our contractors or through the agricultural trade offices in that particular market. We will go ahead and match 
much it comes through uh, based on your product profile, those HS codes. So if uh, a, a request comes in that matches your product profile, those HS codes, you will get a notification via email. Um, and you will also have a notification on your dashboard of your My Wasada account on the trade lead tile. There'll be a little orange notification circle. But really all you need to do is click on that tile. It'll open up a new page and you'll have the contact information for the buyer. And then it's just up to you to reach out to them to see if it's a good fit. Um, so it's kind of a virtual matchmaking, if you will. So a great service. Um, probably underutilized. People don't take advantage of it, but you know, you didn't have to do anything. You didn't even have to leave your home. Just click on the tile and make a phone call. Now we are at the last pillar, our compete pillar, which is our fund match program. And the fund match program provides that 50% cost reimbursement on those eligible international marketing expenses to the qualifying food and agricultural agribusinesses. So companies um, in 2019 that took advantage of the program enjoyed a return on investment of 95 to one, which is pretty fantastic. And then we had about 245 companies take advantage of the program in 2019. This is the guide that you'll become very familiar with as you uh, start participating in Fund Match. As we are uh, funded through taxpayer dollars, um, we do follow a very detailed set of federal regulations. So we have defined the policies to protect you and the program's viability. The guide is up to date. It's an exhaustive resource. It outlines the regulations and policies in clear and user-friendly language. Um, in, on the example on the right, you can see um, printed sales materials. On the left in green would be expenses that would be considered eligible for reimbursements for that type of activity. On the right side, that is in orange. Um, they may be expenses that you would be typically incurring with this uh, type of activity, but would not be considered eligible. So we try to show both sides so that we, we can be as clear as possible. Um, so I just recommend companies that you go ahead and become familiar with the guide and then get to know the certain sections of the guide that you're going that are per pertinent to what you're going to be doing. Um, it is available on our website and, and I can send you a link as well um, if to make it easier. One thing to know um, regarding fund match is there are some areas that are would not be considered eligible for reimbursement. So there's uh, countries that are considered federally prohibited, such as Cuba, Iran, North Korea, Syria, and the Crimea re region of the Ukraine. So you would not be able to carry out any marketing initiatives there and seek reimbursements. And then there are some areas that are considered part of the domestic market, um, such as the US territories and some outlying areas that including Federated States of Micronesia, Guam, Midway Islands, Puerto Rico, US Virgin Islands, and American Samoa. So again, if you were going to be carrying out any marketing initiatives in those areas, you would not be able to seek reimbursements because it's considered part of the domestic market. One of the neat features that we um, recently launched on our website is having example claims available um, for people to uh, compare their claims to. So I, I know we have everything listed out in the guide, and it's one thing to look at it, you know, a, a long list of what you need to have to submit into our office, but it's also helpful to see what an actual claim looks like. So our fund match team put together these great um, example claims. Again, it's available on our website. So take advantage of those when you get to the point of um, utilizing the program. We also have some fun videos that explain the program as well. Um, for example, you can see the fund match airfare claims. Go ahead and click on our fun little video. Um, but it's just another tool to help you to be successful. So in creating your MyWusada account, um, it makes you eligible to participate in our Global Connect program. There's a little bit more criteria to be eligible for the Fund Match program. So you do need to be headquartered in the WUSADA region to be eligible for Fund Match. A small business, according to SBA guidelines, which, which is typically under 500 employees, but that's based on your NAICS code. I, I've seen it go up to about 1,200. Um, I think that's either for dog food or cat food industry, and um, that's their threshold. Uh, you do need to be legally licensed, independently owned, and operating for at least 12 months, and then meet all product and packaging requirements, which we'll take a look at the next slide. 
So for your products and packaging, products that you're promoting need to meet the 50% US origin rule. So products that are processed in the United States but not grown in the United States would not be eligible for reimbursements, at least 50%, of course. Um, products need to be agriculturally based. Uh, again, since our funding comes ultimately through the Farm Bill, through the Market Access Program, um, we, we are trying to support the farmer on that processed product level. So your ingredients ultimately need to be farmed, fished, or forested. Your company then must also have brand ownership. And if you do not own your brand, then you need to have a sole agency agreement with the brand owner um, to be able to utilize the funding to promote their product in that particular country market. And then your product needs to be clear, clearly marked as a product of the USA. And this is probably the number one reason that companies may be denied um, their claim is that their product or their marketing um, collateral did not have that appropriate US origin statement. And we'll take a look at some of the examples on this next slide. Um, so these are just examples of what could be eligible uh, to use on your on your uh, marketing material and your labels. Um, you're not limited to these, but if you, it is outside of uh, what's listed on this page, I would definitely check with Chloe Mesh. She is our fund match manager and she would be able to let you know whether or not your statement would be considered eligible. Um, one thing to note that is your origin statement cannot be contained within the brand name. Um, an example would be um, say New Mexico Walnut Company. Uh, so just because they call out New Mexico in their brand name, it, it does not make it an eligible statement. It needs to be something similar to grown in New Mexico, made in New Mexico. Um, and one thing to also note, if you are going to use Oregon, so your state name, um, it needs to be spelled out in its entirety. And that's because an abbreviation can be misinterpreted as a foreign country market. I don't have a good example for Oregon, but for California, for example, CA can be misinterpreted as Canada. So as we're a program to promote the export of US goods, all products and labels and promotional um, materials need to have that appropriate US origin statement. So now let's jump into um, funding, uh, the amounts that you can request. So there is a minimum request across the board, which is $2,500, meaning you're spending $5,000 in those eligible promotional activities being reimbursed $2,500. In your first year taking advantage of the program, if you're a brand new exporter, um, have you know this is your first time uh, taking advantage of the program, the maximum amount that you can request is 25,000. So spending 50,000 being reimbursed 25,000. If you are um, already exporting to Canada or into Mexico, um, then you can have a dialogue with our fund match manager and she can increase that initial amount to 50,000 in that first year of using uh, fund match. Every year after your first year, the maximum amount increases to 300,000. Again, spending 600 being reimbursed 300. And the reason that we put that kind of um, threshold on your first year is just so you can become familiar with the process, become familiar with you know, the, the claim submission, all of the necessary documentation for those activities. We just wanna make it as user-friendly as possible and keep the communication open, uh, the com communication lines open so that way you understand um, how the program works. And then in that second year, um, you'll be well-versed and be able to uh, request additional funding. So on the next two slides, we're gonna take a look at some of the expenses that you can seek reimbursements for. And this is just a partial list. And the guide really has all of the details about uh, what would be considered eligible and ineligible uh, through the program. Um, there's a lot of visual charts, bright and easy to read pages, um, just to make it uh, easy for you to understand what, what is considered eligible and ineligible expenses. But let's start with the first bullet point here. We have the domestic, approved domestic trade shows. So in the back of the guide, uh, there is a list of trade shows um, that take place in the United States that the USDA has deemed eligible for reimbursements for exhibiting at the show. So the type of expenses that you could be reimbursed for would be your booth space, um, shipment of your samples to the trade show, marketing material you have created specifically for the show. Uh, travel is not considered an eligible expense to um, attend these specific trade shows, so just keep that in mind. Um, Promotional, promotional giveaways, that's another one um, that you could seek reimbursements for that would be tied to that domestic trade show. 
Uh, if you, on the flip, go to the international trade show, again, the booth space, the uh, shipment of your samples, um, those giveaways, again, still eligible for reimbursements, but you can also seek reimbursements for your air travel, your hotel, your meals at incidentals. So there really is much more once you go international. Um, looking at in-store demonstrations, in-store displays, again, that's all taking place in that foreign country market. Um, in-store, excuse me, website development. That's one that companies are really starting to tap into given uh, what's taking place right now in our world. Uh, so if you want to build a website on a foreign IP address uh, targeting a specific market that could be eligible for reimbursements. Yeah. Or if you want to build a page on your existing website, um, say you want to target Japan and you have it translated all into Japanese, that could be an eligible reimbursable expense as well. Again, all of this is contained within the Fun Match Guide, so don't feel like you have to memorize it all now um, because we did make that beautiful guide, so you can have access to that. Now let's look at the timeline for applying for Fun Match. So uh, the program uh, applications go live for the coming year on August 1st. So August 1st of 2020, we opened up the 2021 application. So currently you could still apply for 2020 and 2021. Uh, if it made sense, um, if you had something going on in the latter part of 2020. Uh, the program year does run from January 1st to December 31st, and then throughout the year you conduct those eligible promotional activities and then submit claims into our office within 90 days after the marketing activity has ended. And then all claims for the previous year need to be submitted by the last day of February. And then, like I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, um, we will ask that you complete that survey at the end of the program year to document any of your results. It is part of the fund match contract and again it really just enables us to be more effective in fulfilling our responsibilities and then like I mentioned we share the results with FAS to keep the fund match program viable at that federal level. The application process is pretty straightforward. Um, you just log into your MyWusada account, click on the Fun Match tile, choose the year you wish to apply for. You're going to be asked to fill in your company information, your marketing plan, which is going to have all of those eligible promotional activities um, for each country market that you, you're going to be carrying them out. And then the product information. There is a $250 application fee, um, so just be aware of that. And then um, one thing to note is your approval date is pretty important. So all of only the activities and materials created after your approval date would be eligible for reimbursements. Uh, we know that you may have incurred the expense before the approval date, which is fine, but the activity can't carry, be carried out until after you receive your approval date. Trade shows are a really good example. Um, you may have uh, registered for, say, um, Gulf Food in Dubai, and that can happen almost a year in advance of the show. So you will have incurred the expense, but the show wouldn't have happened until, you know, long after you've gotten your approval date. So if you apply between August 1st and December 31st for the coming year, your approval date will be January 1st, as long as your application is found to be complete. If there is any missing documentation, um, you'll receive an approval date based on the month that your application is found to be complete. So for example, um, you apply for the uh, 2021 program year, but we don't get all the, the supporting documentation until the middle of February, your approval date will be February 1st. Now, when you submit that application online, and um, there are, is gonna be um, some uh, documents that you're gonna be submitting into our office as well. We're gonna wanna take a look at your labels. Um, this is calculation sheet is one of the documents that we're gonna have you submit to us as well. And this is just to double check that the ingredients in your product do meet that 50% um, US agricultural ingredients by weight, excluding water and packaging. Um, so this uh, one thing to note is minerals and salt cannot be used to meet the agricultural Cultural requirement because um, they're not considered uh, an agricultural ingredient. Um, if you do need any help in filling this particular um, calculation sheet out, please reach out to our fund match team. They're happy to walk through it with you. And you don't have to have all of your ingredients listed. As long as you meet that 50% threshold, then we're good to go. And I know some companies don't like to give out their formulary. So uh, we've made it that flexible. So that way, just show as long as you're meeting that 50%, we're good to go. 
One exciting thing um, that is coming around in 2021 is there is no more graduation rule. So for those of you who are familiar with um, graduation, uh, there was a five year limit on utilizing the funding in a particular country market, but come 2021, that will no longer be the case. The USDA has removed that from the market access program regulation. So I know our companies are very excited to be able to go back into markets that they had previously graduated from. So kind of looking at the fund match process as a whole, so you submit your application online, it's going to come into our office, our fund match manager Chloe Mesh is going to be the one to review it and approve it. Once it is approved, you're going to receive an allocation notice via email to review. Um, and once you, you agree, then you get your contract um, online as well, it's going to be available to you on your um, your My Wusada account. And then, so it's all done electronically, which is really nice. Uh, but you're also going to be invoiced for a 6% non-refundable administrative fee. And this is based on your approved allocated amount. So for example, if you requested $25,000, the non-refundable admin fee would be $1,500. So I really recommend that companies uh, just request on the conservative side when you're applying. So only build into your marketing plan what you know for sure you're going to be carrying out, knowing that you can come back later on in the year and amend your application to add new products or a new market. Uh, and then you would just have that dialogue with our fund match manager to increase your funding. But once you receive your approval and you're ready to go, you go ahead and conduct those eligible promotional activities, submit claims into our office via mail um, within 90 days after the activity is ended. And then again, at the end of that program year, you'll complete the survey that I mentioned. So this allocation and contract is valid for one program year and you're going to follow this application process and fee schedule for each year you wish to come into the program. Now, how do we get our money back? Um, that's a, one of the great questions that we get. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, all of the claims that you need, or excuse me, claim forms that you need are available on, under our important form section of the fund match uh, portion of our uh, website. Um, so you will submit your completed claim, including the claim form and expense summary sheet. Uh, when we receive it in, we'll log it in and flag it for review. Claims are reviewed in the order that they're received, so there may be several claims ahead of yours, so just be aware. If we do need additional documentation, we make sure to reach out to you immediately. We want to stay within that 90-day window, and you know, just moving forward, we want to ensure that you get your um, your full reimbursement. So if one of our team members is reaching out to you for clarification or additional documentation, make sure you're responsive to them. And then after we finish reviewing it and it is approved, uh, we will request for a batch of claims uh, from the USDA. So we don't actually have the funding there's a USDA bank does. Uh, and there are times of the year when they're a little bit faster than others. So that can affect the speed of their reimbursements to us. But after we receive the funding from the USDA, we will disperse them via um, check um, immediately to the companies. But to give you a time frame, um, from the time you submit it to the time you receive your reimbursement is about 12 to 16 weeks, but it can depend on the volume of claims that we have in the office. Um, also, there are windows of time where we do receive a large number of claims, which would be say 90 days after Natural Products Expo West. It's a very popular show that takes place annually in Southern California and a lot of our companies attend that show. So we do get a huge influx of claims um, 90 days after that show has ended. And you know, some claims are just more complicated than others and that can slow the process down to, but we do work diligently to review and process the claims as quickly as possible. And you can even monitor the process from your My Wusada account and going into your fund match program tile, the year, the claim status, and the claim number. And you can see in this case that our, our claims coordinator, uh, Diana Buswell, would be the one that you would want to reach out to if you had any questions about this specific claim. And you can see that it's in the review process, but I'll guarantee you that she will have already reached out to you and you know who's processing your claim because they're, they're very good at keeping um, the communication open with their uh, with the companies. So to ensure that smooth claims process, um, just make sure you utilize the guide. It is very helpful in lining out what you need to do in order to uh, have all the necessary documentation, um, making sure all your forms are completed out completely, and then submitting the um, claim into our office within 90 days and keep the communication open. If you have questions, please let us know. Uh, again, reading and referring to the guide is going to be very helpful. You can also schedule a time to discuss your marketing plan before you even 
apply for the program with our fund match coordinator or our fund match manager, Chloe Mesh. They're happy to have a discussion with you. If there's any questions um, regarding necessary documentation, you can get that all cleared up before you even carry out the activity, which I think is very helpful. Um, just contact us directly if you have questions. Uh, one of the other things that is important to know moving forward is that you can involve your importers and distributors because we can reimburse them directly for any eligible promotional activities that they're carrying out on your behalf. And if you don't have any importers or distributors yet, you can use this as a negotiation tool as well because they like to know that you have a secured uh, amount of funding that you can tap into. So one of the... Um, more, more common questions that we receive from companies is why do we require so much paperwork? And believe me when I say that we are we are required to review every single piece of paper that you submit into our office. Um, we go through our own review with uh, the USDA. So when we are asking for something, we really do need it. And ultimately it's because we're acting as stewards of taxpayer funds distributed through the USDA's market access program. So it really is our responsibility to to protect our participating companies, our member states, and then obviously the taxpayers who are funding the program as well. Um, so we just ask that our participants conduct their business in accordance with the laws and regulations of the country where they're carrying out an activity, and then in accordance with all of the applicable US federal, state, local laws and regulations, and then of course with our program regulations as well. And failure to do so is grounds for being dropped from the program, and we don't wanna see that happen at all. At the end of the day, really, it's our goal to, main, to maintain and enhance the reputation of our organizations, our participants, and the industry as a whole. And it allows me to be able to share success stories, which is always a, a great point in the presentation. So you can hear about uh, some of the companies who have been able to take advantage of the program and be very successful. The first company that I have to share with you today is um, actually based out of Oregon. Um, and I only learned recently that they're um, in my neck of the woods. So I'm down in Clackamas County and this is uh, where the company is located as well. They're in Oregon City. So Bite Fuel um, has started participating in the fund match program back in 2018 and they were able to launch sales into Canada and then increase their sales in Kuwait as a result of their participation in fund match and then they saw an increase in their overall international sales by 35 percent which is pretty amazing um, so how they use the funding um, they attended natural products expo west again I told you that was a pretty popular show so they use that for the booth fee and and so on and that's where they were able to meet with their distributor in Canada and and then they reconnected with their buyer from Kuwait. They also use the funding to invest in new packaging for Canada. So um, this is something I, I forgot to mention um, previously, but one of the great resources FundMatch can reimburse or how FundMatch can reimburse is if you are entering into a country market and they require you to make a label modification, we can reimburse you 50% of a year's run of labels uh, to meet those requirements. So they were able to tap into that resource um, because they needed to include French and English and then have some additional nutritional information on their labels. Um, so they say that thanks to their growth in these export markets, they were able to hire new employees and increase their purchase of US grown ingredients. And I really like that point because it goes beyond the, the dollar amount. It shows that they were helping out in their community. The next company that we're taking going to take a look at is based out of Colorado. So this is JC Cakes with their product Flapjacked and they're based in Westminster, Colorado. And they started participation in Wisada back in 2014 and they utilized all three program tracks. And they were able to use the Fun Match program to attend on Todd uh, Expo on Todd in Mexico. And while they were there, they met a distributor visiting from Iceland. And now their product is on the shelves in a grocery store chain there in Iceland, which is pretty great. They also used the Fun Match program to attend um, several domestic trade shows. Again, um, we have those Expo West, but also Expo East is a very popular show as well. And they went to Expo East uh, utilizing Fun Match, and they met with a distributor from Saudi Arabia, which resulted in their products getting into Safeway and Holland and Barrett's in Saudi Arabia, which I didn't know they had a Safeway over there, but they do. And Holland and Barrett's is one of the world's leading health and wellness retailers and the largest one in Europe, which is pretty amazing. And then they attended the Summer Fancy Food Show that happens in um, I think it's in New York. 
uh, but they met their Indonesian buyer uh, there for the first time. And then they met them again at Expo West. And that's where they were able to confirm that they were on the same track. And now they're doing the paperwork to move forward with doing business in Indonesia. So those are two really great examples of companies that have taken advantage of our programs and been successful. Um, now, if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and put them into the Q&A. Uh, I'm more happy to answer them. If it was a lot of information and you need to kind of digest, that's perfectly fine too. You can always email uh, myself after the fact and I'd be more than happy to follow up with you. Um, I do appreciate everybody's time today. Um, I think that uh, you know, with, with my help and Teresa's help, we can help you be uh, successful in growing your uh, exporting efforts. Teresa, do you have any closing thoughts? I do. I, I thought you covered everything. I just want to echo and emphasize some of the great points you made. Um, that caution about you know, start out with a modest or conservative estimate in the fund match program is really good advice. Um, you can always go back and request more funds. Um, a lot of people get excited and request lots of money, but you gotta spend and get reimbursed. So just plan accordingly. Um, the other thing I wanted to emphasize, and we kind of touched on it, but how closely Wasada and the departments of agriculture are is actually the state departments of agriculture for the Western US are the board of directors for Wasada. So not only do we work with Wasada in the Global Connect, but my boss is their boss. It's kind of weird. And we work on the Global Connect. We actually do a lot of planning of all the activities. So they don't just pop in. Um, each of the state departments of agriculture put together a plan together of what we will do in each market. So if you have a specific international market that you want to do an effort in, please reach out to me or you know, if I'm telling the same thing in Washington, if there's a Washington company, reach out to the Washington State Department of Agriculture. Because if we know that you want to go to a organic, I don't know, or maybe, uh, maybe that's not a good example, but you want to go to a specialty baking show in Korea or a specialty gift show in Taiwan, if you can tell us that, we can build that into some of our plans so that our efforts in the Global Connect complement where you're wanting to go. Um, that's something that's possible. But our planning horizon is two years out, so talk to us now. <laughs> talk to us now for 2022. Um, I still don't see any questions. Ask questions, you guys, or I'm just going to keep talking. It, it definitely was a lot of information to digest, and, and I can understand. And, you know, maybe we need a few more cups of coffee to get the ball rolling. Um, but again, you know, everything that Teresa says is fantastic. Please reach out to Teresa. How do you schedule one-on-one -on -one consultation? That's a great question. So that is done through your MyWasada account and go on to our events search page. And I one of the slides I had up previously where I had all of our activities. Um, on the very top is the one-on-one -on -one consultation. And you just click register and choose the day and time that works best for you. And then you'll get a, um, a, an email with the link to the Zoom meeting. So it's, it's pretty um, straightforward. And if you end up having any challenges, send me an email and I can walk you through the process. Nice. One more thing that you mentioned, US-based international shows. That is huge. If you guys are already paying to go to Expo West and you're not getting 50% reimbursement with Wasada, that's just lost, lost opportunity there. So that's a huge thing. And if you're already doing it, that's important to just make the most of the resources that Wasada has. Absolutely agree, Teresa. This is definitely an underutilized program and we want to get the word out and help you all to be very successful. Um, so I guess I'll just go ahead and thank everybody uh, for joining us today. I really appreciate your time. Again, we're happy to jump on a call with you. If you do have additional questions uh, afterwards, um, definitely want to give you the opportunity to think about what you've learned today and 
further that if I don't have the answers, I will get you connected with the individual who will. I make a lot of introductions to Teresa um, because I, I'm not the expert in all things export. I'm very much well-versed in WSADA programs, but if you do have those exporting questions, please make sure you reach out to Teresa. We're, we're here to help you be successful. So again, thank you so much for your time and please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everybody.